Hi, this is Lee Garrett, and welcome to another edition of Screencast Online. There are lots of note-taking applications on the market at the moment, and we're certainly spoiled for choice. With the likes of Notion, Roam, Obsidian, Craft, and Evernote out there fighting for our custom, it's hard to think there's actually room for another. Well, it turns out there is. AmpleNote is a relatively new offering that approaches note-taking with a unique viewpoint. Let me explain. This is AmpleNote's idea execution funnel. Now it's a methodology that plots the life cycle of an idea that you have. So you have the idea or ideas and capture them somewhere. Then you organize them or pad the ideas out. And then as you work your way through the funnel, you plan how you're gonna execute the idea, define its importance before finally scheduling it to be done. Now ordinarily you would use different applications at different layers of this funnel. So you might use a dedicated capture app like Drafts or use a quick capture functionality in Notion or Evernote. Then when it comes to fleshing out the note, you may use a different application again and so on down the funnel. AmpleNote is able to deal with each layer. So it's a quick capture tool. It's a sophisticated notebook. It's an intelligent task manager as well as a calendar. Let's take a look at pricing and platforms now. So You'll see I'm actually in Chrome at the moment rather than Safari, and there's a good reason for that. AmpleNote works superbly in Chrome and has a great Chrome extension that I'll cover later. Now there is a native application that you can get from the Mac App Store, but this only covers the Apple M1 chip devices at the moment. And there is also a native application that we can download from Chrome itself, which is another reason for me to be using Chrome exclusively here. And we'll download those shortly, but onto pricing, and if you're hoping for a free tier, then you're out of luck. This application is a pure subscription service, which of course gives the application sustainability and longevity. And you'd hope that that means it's gonna be around and part of your workflow for a while to come. Now the basic tier starts at just under $6 per month. And of course we'll cover this feature set over the course of the next two videos, but there is no publishing of notes in the basic tier and no ability to secure sensitive notes, but there's lots of other features here onto the pro plan and this is what I'm going to be showing you today so I will show you how to publish notes and how to secure them and this is $10 per month and there is also a founder tier which is $20 per month and gives you early access to new features as well as a solid say in the roadmap of the application now I'm going to log into ample notes though by clicking up here and if you haven't got an Ample Note account, you can sign up at the bottom by clicking this link, or you can use your Google or iCloud accounts here to sign in. Now I'm just going to pause and sign into my Ample Notes account. Okay, I'm signed into Ample Notes, and before we look at the interface and how to work through the different phases of the funnel, I'll just quickly show you how to install the standalone application from Chrome itself. Now, the M1 version on the App Store is easy. It's like installing a normal app from there. So I'm not gonna waste time showing you that. However, here in Chrome, I'm gonna click this download button here. And on this pop-up, I'll click install. And as quick as a flash, AmpleNote opens as a separate application. And is of course very similar to the web version. Now if I just close this, we can see in the finder window there, the application is stored within the Chrome apps folder, which itself is in applications. And you can also open Ample Note now from Spotlight. Right, Ample Note is open in the Chrome web browser. So let's take a moment to just look at the interface, well, what there is of it. And that's not a criticism at all, because when you're emptying your head and processing information, you don't want distractions. And this is definitely a clutter-free environment here. And when you first open, you land in the jot section, and there is what is known as a daily jot, ready for you to start typing. On the left in the sidebar, your account name is here at the top and there is a drop down that allows you to go into your account settings. You can access the help center here, which is very useful, as well as turn on dark mode or log out. Below this, we have the components of the idea execution funnel. So at the top is jots, which is the first section we're gonna of course cover. And this is designed for quick capture of information. And then beneath we have our notes themselves. And here you will either create new notes or further develop the jots that you've made earlier. Below this, we have our tasks. And this will list all of the tasks that have been created throughout your whole note library. And then finally, at the bottom, we have our calendar where we schedule the tasks to be completed. Below the funnel, we have some shortcuts available as well as tags. And these are gonna be made clearer in just a minute. So 
As said, when we open Ample Note, we come straight into the Jots section. Now this is the date that I'm recording this portion of the video. And this hashtag daily jots here is known as a tag. Now many notes can have the same tag and a note can have many tags. And every day a new jot is going to be created that has today's date with a tag of daily jots after it. And we will create some more tags very soon to further expand on this point. For now though, I want to just get some information out of my head and into print. So I'll just dump a few ideas here. My inbox needs emptying. We've got Lilia's birthday coming up, so lots of planning to do there. And if I know one of these is going to be a task, I can type in a closed square bracket here. And then when I press space, I can type in the task name. Then when I press enter afterwards, it thinks that I want another task, but I can just press backspace to refer it back to normal text. Let's type in one more. I want to find out when Loki is released. And now I'll just pause the recording and dump a few more ideas in here. OK, I've emptied my head a little. There's uh, lots of stuff here. And right now it's just a list of things. It's a list of stuff, but it doesn't have to be that way. If you're a deep journaler or a fan of Julia Cameron's morning pages concept, you can jot down your thoughts, your emotions, what's been good, what's been bad here as well. But when you're using it as a brain dump, the idea here is to either immediately or at a later date process all of this. So inbox needs emptying. That's going to be a task. So I'll put some square brackets before it here. And we will cover tasks soon. But if I just move across to the right and click the drop down, if I want to configure things like due dates, repeats and the like, I can do that here or wait until I process the task. Now, Lilia's birthday coming up. That's big. And it's good that I've written it down because it means that I won't forget it. It's not stuck in my brain. But I want a new note created for this. So I'll come to notes. I could have just come up here and clicked new note, but I did just want to further embed a concept for you. So here you can see our daily jot. It's in the notes section. So if I click it, you can see it's exactly the same as the jot. And that's because the jot is a note. When you create a jot, you're actually creating a note in the back end. We can see the tag here is daily jots. The title is the same. The content is the same. A jot is simply unformatted. It's a plain text entry. And if you want to expand on your jot at all, you come here into notes and format it. You, you make it hold, you make it something. Now, if I edit this note here and then come back to jots, of course, the change is taken. And that's because they are one and the same thing. It's just a very different UI. Jots are for getting stuff out of your head. They're not for processing and making things whole. In any case, I'm going to come into notes. I'll click new note in the corner. And the new note template appears and the cursor is flashing at the title already. So I'll give the note a title here. And then if I click below, I can give the note a tag, which, which I will do. I'm going to call this one Lilia space birthday. And you'll see that when I click space, it automatically puts in a small hyphen between the two words, which is important because those of you who tag often will know that keeping the same format in how you name tags is really important to keeping a tidy database. I can add multiple tags to the note if I wish, but right now all I want to do is come back to jots. And you'll see there is a new tag available in the tag section, which is the one that we just created. And if I click on it, then any notes that have the tag Lilia birthday will be available here for me to jot additions to. At the top, we have a new daily jot that will simply create a new note with today's date as the title and a tag of Lilia birthday. And then below that is the note, albeit empty, that we just created. And because I'm emptying my head of ideas now for her birthday, this jot section is a good distraction free place for me to type. I'll put in a task with some square brackets here. And this is get her birthday list. Now I'll just pause and empty my head of things that I think I need to cover off for her birthday. Right, that's a comprehensive list of things that I think I need to look at to sort her birthday out. I certainly feel a lot more relieved in my head. This stuff has been captured. I don't need to think about it right now. And as I click on notes, I can see the updates here. And this is now where I can format, so I can flesh out, and I can be more distracted now in the detail of what I've written down. Back across to Jots, and before we look at capturing on iOS, it'd be good to add this particular tag as a shortcut. Now, as you create more notes with more tags, the tag section is going to fill up. 
And if you want to jot an update to an existing note, you're going to need to scroll to find the one that you want. And this creates friction because all you want to do is open the app and jot down your thoughts. Now to do this, I'll click on the Lilia birthday tag and then I'll click on the star next to the tag's name. And this now creates a shortcut to the tag, but be careful not to create too many of them. Keep them for the projects or the notes that you use most often. Otherwise, you'll just find yourself searching through the shortcuts, which kind of defeats the object of them. I'll just pause there for a second to build up a little bit more of a note structure here, which is going to help the upcoming sections and hopefully further cement the idea of tags and jots for you. So I've created notes and assigned them tags for things like blog ideas, games I want to buy or play, home improvements that need to be made. Let's click on one here. Let's click on video. And I've got two notes that I can update here quickly on the fly. So as before with the Lilia birthday tag, I can jot down some notes in a brand new note with today's date and the video tag, or I can find a specific note that I wish to update and type. So I want to watch Black Widow and the Eternals. And as I discover things that I like, I can simply add them here. Now back to notes, just so that you can see that the note is there with the content that I've just added. Now, quite often you're going to get your ideas when you're actually on the move, not sitting here in front of your Mac. So let's take a look at how we can capture on iOS. Right, I've downloaded Ample Note already from the App Store and I'm going to sign in for the first time on iOS. And the same as the web and Mac versions, you can create a new account from here if you wish as well. So I'll click and it asks if I want to sign in with my Apple ID. I'll click continue and sign in with Face ID. OK, in a short while, we come straight into the notes section. So rather than going into Jots as it does via the web interface, we're into notes by default on here. So I'd rather go into Jots by default in all honesty. And I haven't seen the preferences here to change this default behavior. I do have a workaround, though, of course, which I'll show you later. But for now, I'll just go into Jots by tapping this hamburger button. And we can see here this really does mimic the web interface that we've just seen. So I'll tap Jots and my daily Jots appear here. So I can tap and I add thoughts and ideas as they come to mind. So repair a window and purchase a new standing desk, which is very important to me at the moment. So I'm done with that and just tapping away anywhere saves this. And I can see my shortcuts I created earlier. So if I want to add to a note that has the Lilia birthday tag, I can just tap. And as per the web version, all of the notes that have that tag are here. So that's capturing. I'll just go into notes and verify that the jots that we made have taken. So here is our daily jot with today's date and the tag. So I'll open it. Now, sometimes you may have a lot of ideas relating to just one project or theme. Now, if that's the case that you've put them all in a daily jot, you can just rename this note here now. Forgive the lack of thought here. And if you wish, you can add a new tag as well. You can, of course, add more if you wish, and I could remove the existing tag by clicking the cross, but I'll keep it for now and I'll tap back. The rename note is clearly visible at the top, and then into jots, and we can see there is actually a brand new daily jot note available to us. The renamed one is still in this view, but only because I didn't remove the daily jots tag from it. Remember, this shortcut is showing all notes with the daily jots tag. If I remove it, it disappears from this view. A couple more points to raise from this jot section on iOS. So we can create a new note with one tap by using this button just here. And then from here, I can flesh out one of the ideas that I had on the daily jot. So let's go for the standing desk purchase. And to just pause there while I flesh this note out a little bit. So two new tags, office and health. I added a task to it as well as an idea that I want to still further investigate. Back on the Mac now and in the web interface via Chrome. So we do have a three pane view here. So at the moment, all of the available panes are on display. But if I click this button here, then the far left pane is removed. And then next to that, I can remove the note list completely. So if you do want to have more focus when working or space, then you can have it. I'll put it back now as it was though. And every day there is a tip of the day displays. So here it says you can use Command and O plus Enter to open your last note, which is very useful. I'm going to create a new note though, so I'll click. And what I'm going to do is create a new note that's going to contain some ideas for Lilia's birthday list. Now I'll just check that I don't have anything like this already by coming up to search notes and I'll type in some search criteria here. 
I can see there are two notes that have the word Lilia in, and I'm happy that I'm not reinventing anything by creating this new one. So I'll close this search and give the note a name. Now I do want to give it a tag, but what tag shall I give it? I'm going to call it Gifts. Now, because I want it to be associated with Lilia's birthday as well, I could tag it with the Lilia birthday tag. However, to give myself a little bit more flexibility, Ample Note uses nested tags, which means that if I come over here to my tags and select Lilia birthday, I can drag that tag up to gifts and place it in there. So now when I click on the gift tags, rather gifts tag, I should have probably planned that one a little bit better, clearly. I'll see any notes with tags that are nested below this. So here I may create separate tags for all of my family members and have them sitting under this gifts tag. Or you may want to work the opposite way and have the names of loved ones as core tags and then put tags like gifts, health information, memories, etc. below that. Also, it's not just a two level hierarchy here. I can grab another tag, let's just pick one at random and drag that here. So there's now a three tier hierarchy. To remove the nesting for a tag, simply drag it up to tags here and it's put back at the highest tier. I'll just do that with this one as well. Now to suit the purpose I have actually here, I want to put the gifts tag underneath Lilia birthday for now because Lilia birthday is going to be like my core project as it were. And then I'm going to have little sub projects like gifts, food, entertainment, etc. that are going to sit beneath this. Okay, let's fill this note out now. So the note body is very similar to other note taking applications when it comes to composition. I'll type in something that Lily would like, and then I can bold it, I can italicize, I can strike it through, then click them all again to remove that formatting. We've got a highlight button here, as well as the traditional three levels of headings that you can choose from. Now to the right of this, we can turn the text into a task. And then we have a bullet list and then finally a numbered list here. Now links are a great feature in Ample Note because of how they're applied. I'm going to click on the link icon and you can use Command and K just like you can with most other applications. And we can enter the link at the top of this window that's appeared. Now if I switch across to Safari, I do indeed have the site open. So I'll press Command and L to go to the address bar then Command and C to copy that URL. And then I'll switch back across to Ample Note in Chrome and press Command V to paste and the link is in. And that can be enough, but we can also add in a description or footnote here as well. So I'll do that. And finally on this link, I can add an image file. So I can either drag and drop it in or click here to open a finder window and then select the file that would like to add. So this folder here and there we are. There's the image I want, so I'll click open. It uploads and I'll click done. Now next to the iPhone 12 text, there is a little icon that I can click. And this opens up the footnote and gives us some great information. I can go to the link site, I could expand the image or edit the details of this footnote. I'll close it for now though. Like other applications, I'm thinking Evernote and DevonThink in particular, Ample Note has a web clipper, and this means that when you find some information on a website that you'd like to capture and store in Ample Note, there is a Chrome extension that will do this for you. So I've created a new note here for Lilia's birthday food, and we can see by the tag here that it's got a tag of food and drink, which is underneath the Lilia birthday tag. And I've also created a task to find a recipe for key lime cheesecake, which is Lilia's favorite. Now, before I go any further, I need to install the Chrome extension for the web clipper, which is called Ample Cap. So I've got the Chrome web store open here and I'll search for Ample Cap. And here it is. I'll click. And we can see it here. Now it is in beta mode at the moment, but it is very reliable as I record this. Otherwise, I certainly wouldn't include it here. I'll select it and then click Add to Chrome. Now, like all pop ups, read this carefully, of course. Don't just click it blindly. I'm happy with this, so I'll add the extension. And Ample Note is added to Chrome. Now, if you use the Chrome browser on multiple devices, you can turn on sync so that this extension will appear wherever you go. I don't though, so I'll close this. And now I need to sign into Ample Note. So I'll just pause and go through that. 
Okay, I've signed in with my Apple account and I need to give permission for Ample Cap to modify my notes. So I'll click Authorize and it's installed and logged in. Now, invoking Ample Cap is as easy as pressing Shift Command and A when you're on a website. And there's a couple of other shortcuts here as well which are useful. I'm going to close this window though and go to the cheesecake recipe that I have found. I'll just refresh the page to make sure that as it's only just installed, Ample Cap will work. And then I could invoke it with the shortcut, of course. However, if you don't like shortcuts because they're nowadays there are just too many to remember, then come up to the extensions button here and then pin the Ample Cap one so that it always shows. And it now appears, and if I click it, then a sidebar slides over, which has a lot of options for what and how you would like to capture information from this website. Along the top here, we have the five methods of capture. So you can screenshot part of the screen, saving it as an image in your notes. You can highlight some text, which will be pasted into Ample Notes. You can simply take the page as a whole and lift and shift it into Ample Note. You can create a quick note as well as just copying the URL of the site. Then below this, you can select whether you want the captured information displayed as standard text as a to-do list item or as a bullet point. Let's do a screenshot capture. I'll click, then make sure that the area I want to capture is in view. Now I need to click select area and this turns the cursor into a crosshair that allows me to drag over the part of the screen that I would like. And then when I'm happy, I'll click capture selection. Ample note uploads and then after a short while, we're told it's done. Now this should have created a new note with the title clearly marked here. So as Ample Cap slides away, I'm going to go back to the Ample Note tab here. A brief pause while it indexes. And here is the note. And if I click, we can see the screen capture there. Now, if you don't want to keep the note, it can be deleted by coming over to the three dots here and clicking Delete Note. Right, let's take a look at a couple more of the capture options here with Ample Cap. I'll switch on the sidebar once more via the button here. And as said, we can change from capturing the content as part of the note body to a to-do item instead, or a bullet point. You can modify what the capture annotation text is as well. By default, it's the contents of the Chrome tab at the top. Now, if you want to add this to an existing note, you can click here rather than create a new one. And then click the drop down for the note and all of your notes should be listed here. So you can scroll through and choose one. You can also capture to your clipboard instead, so it's ready for pasting anywhere. But I'm going to create another new note here. I'm going to call this Key Lime Cheesecake. And I'm going to give it a tag here as well. Now, I'm going to tag it with recipes and then desserts. There's no reference at all to Lilia's birthday notes here. And the reason for that will be apparent soon enough. What I want to do is start building my own collection of recipes. So those tags work nicely for me. And this time I'm going to look at a page excerpt, which will basically take some text from the web page and then capture it into Ample Note. So I'll highlight this text here, and then I'll come over and click Select Text. And to be fair, I could have done that the other way around. To be honest, I could have clicked Select Text and then come over here and chosen the text to capture. But I can see clearly in yellow the text that will be captured. So now I'll come back across, I'll click Capture Excerpts, and then once more we're told it's done. So across to Ample Note again, where we'll wait for the indexing to complete. And there is the note, of course, here is the text, but there's actually a lot more detail here. Below that, we have a link to the site where the text was captured from, as well as the date and time that the capture took place. OK, let's go back to the recipe page now. And this time, all I want to do is capture the whole page. So I'll come down and make sure that full page is selected here. And I'll also just change this new note title. I don't want that ample note at the beginning. And I'll do the same for the capture annotation text. Then I'll click capture. And this does take a lot longer than the captures we made previously. There's a lot of rendering to do in order to make sure that the page looks presentable within ample note. But it's now uploaded and done. So let's see what it looks like. And there we are, we have it scaled down to fit in the note nicely, but there it is nonetheless. And as I scroll, I can see that it is an exact replica of the live page.
So I'm sure you'll find yourself using a combination of full page printouts, screenshots and page excerpts predominantly when using AmpleCap. It really is a very quick and efficient capture mechanism. Now let's go back to Lilia's birthday note here and I've completed that task. I've researched the recipe, so I'll tick the task as complete. And this now removes it from the body of the note. But at the bottom here, we can see that it's not disappeared. The date that the task was completed is presented there. And we'll look at this more in the task section in the second video. But what I do want to do now, though, is link to that recipe from this note so that I don't need to search for it in the future. This is what is known as a backlink, and they're very easy to create, but they have so many use cases. So I'm going to type desserts here. I'll give it a little heading there. And then I can list the ones I want to prepare. So first, of course, is going to be the cheesecake. And to create a link to another note, I'll type two left-hand square brackets. Then I can type to search for a note that I want to link to. There it is. Now, if I press enter, it also completes by closing the brackets and an icon appears to the right that when I click, takes me to that note. A little more on backlinks now, because if you plan your note hierarchy well enough, backlinks can prove to be a very important piece of how you use Ample Note, because they really can tie different notes together and turn your Ample Note setup into a real wiki. Now here I've created a note called Equipment Hit List, and I've got a few notes down here, including some links to other sites, notably this new Alexa one here. If I click, then it opens up a page directly to Amazon where I can buy that model. OK, let's close it. Now, what I want to do is if I had other notes that would be making use of that link, I'd rather just point them to this one, because then if the link changes for whatever reason in the future, I need to change one rather than many. And that is a great use case for using backlinking. So first I'll go into search here and just see if there are any other notes that have Alexa in. Sure enough, there are two. This first one is Lilia Gifts. Now, while the video was paused, I added a fourth tech gift there. And now if I highlight the text and press Command and K to add a link, I don't have to link to an external site, not at all. I can link to an existing note in here. So if I just start by typing the name of the note here, I want equipment hit list, so I'll click and the link is taken. Now I'll just click it to check that it works. And sure enough, it takes me to the source notes and I can click the link to the new Alexa device. Now let's do the same on this equipment required for kitchen notes. At the top entry here, I'll select it all and press command K once more. Start typing the name of the page. I'll select it and I'll check again. Sure enough, it works fine as expected. Now at the bottom here, we've got a list of all of the notes within Ample Note that are currently backlinking to this page. We can see the note names, the tags, and the exact text that is being used to link here. Now, depending on how much backlinking you're doing, you may find that this list really builds up. So a new addition to Ample Note is the ability to filter these backlink entries by tag. I'll click the filter button. Let's say I just want to see the gift entries shown here. Well, there we are. Just the one backlink is shown to me now. And I can, of course, if I wish, click that to take me back to that note. So backlinking can take some real planning. And there's probably a whole tip video at some point in the future on how you can strategize it. But it's certainly well worth looking at. Now, rather than starting tasks, which is a fairly large section, we're going to close part one of this two-parter by looking at some more note options that are available. So clicking on these three dots here presents some more options to us. And we're going to look at publishing notes in the next video. However, adding collaborators to your existing notes is an easy process. And if you know the Ample Note username, you can enter that or just add their email address. You can add a message if you wish, and also determine what permissions they can have at the outset here. Any combination of sharing and editing. And when you're ready, just click Add User. And that user will receive an email with a link that allows them access to the note. And also, I can now see that the button shows how many people this note is shared with. So I'll just click it again. And I can add more users or I can actually edit the current one at the bottom here. So if I click the drop down, I can change what this user is able to do. I can also delete this user, which prevents their access, of course. 
This does, however, add the user as a frequent collaborator, which is a good thing, as this means that you don't need to type their username or email address the next time you need to invite them to share a note. Just simply click on their name. OK, let's close that. And coming back into our options, we can apply something called Vault Encryption. Now, Vault Notes are encrypted end-to-end, -end, and their encryption password is never sent to the Ample Note servers. A random 256-bit key is generated when you create your password, and if you have very secure data that you wish to store and are permitted to store in Ample Note, then this should definitely be applied. If it's something you want to know more about, then I strongly recommend you do click the Help Center link here to find out more information. OK, I'll close this. And underneath we have more options. We can download the notes so that if you have difficulties accessing notes online, Due to network difficulties, etc., you can have an offline copy stored. Duplicating the note allows you to create a replica of this note, which can be useful if you want to create note templates for meeting minutes, perhaps, or anything else that you need to do more than once. Locking the note will prevent the note from being edited, and then archiving the note stops the note from being seen in your main note view. It is still fully searchable, though. Now, it is possible to mail additions directly into your notes. Every Ample Note user has this functionality enabled by default, and each note can have a unique email address assigned. Now I'll click Copy here, and the note is on my clipboard. I'm just going to pause now while I get my mail application opened. OK, a new message has opened. I'm going to press Command and V to paste in that address. Now what this is going to do is it's going to add the emailed contents to the note as a list item. But if I want to create a new note where the title of the note is the subject and the body of the email represents the body of the note, then I'd need to delete all of these characters here. So that's the tilde and onwards. It would be a good idea to save this as a contact called new ample note in the future. I'm just going to put in the subject here though and click send. And now I'm going to come back into that note and see what's occurred. And there we are. It's been entered as an item in this list here. OK, back up to our note options now. And we can see the revision history, which is really useful so that you can see older versions of the notes if you need to pull out any kind of older information for any reason. Just click on each previous version to see how the note looked. This is useful if you delete something that you really shouldn't have. Then finally, we can view all of the note details when it was created, changed, the word count, character count, and task information as well. So that's the first part of Ample Notes, looking at the basics of jots and notes. Now, next time, we're going to cover the two remaining parts of the idea execution funnel, namely tasks and calendar, as well as look at rich footnotes in more detail, publishing, importing and exporting, and some more quick wins with Ample Note. So thanks for watching. And we'll be back next week with more videos. So we'll see you then.